What is up, everybody? Mark on the mic here. Mr. Ruben Alexson across from me right now. And we have Tyler from the Silencer Shop all the way from the great state of Texas here with us. Welcome to Wisconsin. Today. Guys. Tyler Walters, right? That's me. Yeah. You said, I was like, what's your last? And then you're like, well, if you just want to remember the first name. And then I feel like I actually would have, I got gun shy. Yeah. And I didn't want to go I set for you it, up for you know? That. That's, my, that's my fault. But Tyler Walters from the Silencer Shop, you guys did some traveling yesterday. A little bit, yeah. Got to see the place a little bit. We did. It's a fantastic facility. Appreciate it. Thanks for being here. Absolutely. Thanks for having us. This is fun. We are precasting a little bit. And you made a, uh, I'm going to get to the, uh, the topic of conversation here in a minute, but you made a, you made a reference, and I'd be curious if you could ex- expound on it. You made uh, a slight reference to the 300 WSM, and I thought maybe you could expand on that. Uh, I have absolutely nothing good to say about that cartridge. I was just giving you a hard time, to be honest with you. And that's all I have to say about 300 Wisdom. And then what, and then, and then what was my response? Um, you were gracious, and you said how wise I was, and you just sung my praises from the mountaintops. It was great. I, I really no, appreciated actually, that. Part. Actually, I canceled the podcast <laughs> as an impartial. <laughs> but then third I wanted party. to get on the podcast that. to cancel it officially. I no, forgot about that part. I'm kidding. Yep, I'm kidding. Uh, boy, cartridges—they sure make the world go round, don't they? Uh, the topic of today's conversation, not the great 300 WSM. We're going to talk shockingly about suppressors. Now, uh, full disclosure. So we did a podcast with uh, with Dave Matheny mm-hmm. with the Silencer Shop, mm-hmm. uh, like two years ago. gave us a, gave us a lot of great information, approximately two years ago. Uh, and I, I was jazzed up, and and he gave me all this information and all the tools to uh, to select and choose a suppressor, and and the means to do it. I am embarrassed to say I still haven't. I know. I just wanted to get this out on the table right now. I, I know just, a guy that can help. That's what I'm hoping today. And that's what we're going to talk <laughs> about uh, about me. No, uh, yeah, we're going to talk This is all about Mark. We're going to yeah. talk about uh, we're going to talk about single shot suppressor truss. Uh, you guys have a couple other styles we do. as well available. And the uh, the handy dandy kiosks that you have, and essentially just the ABCs of I've decided I want a suppressor. Now what? Now what? Like, uh, do I buy the suppressor first? Then I maybe get a trust, and uh, do I go to the kiosk to get the trust? You know what? What does this process look like? A person says, you know what? I'd like to protect my hearing, uh, like me. Uh, a reminder I had this year, I got into a gunfight with an elk mm-hmm. again, and uh, now my hearing's even worse because I didn't have a suppressor. So let's uh, wh- maybe start to uh, walk us through, like, what's step one, sure. Tyler? And uh, the way I often explain this, which is fortuitous because I'm sitting in an optics manufacturer's facility, is it's a lot, it's similar to buying an optic in that you have to pick out the optic. And there's a lot of black metal tubes that you can mount on the top of your gun. There's a lot of black metal tubes you can mount on the front of your gun as well. So figuring out, you know, do you need the 1 to 10 or do you need a 3 to 9 or a 6 to 36 or whatever it is. It's the same kind of concept with the silencer. Um, We can kind of drill into that later. But in addition to picking out the product, which is going to take some homework on your part, or walking into a gun store and having a download from the guy behind the counter and his personal opinion, either one's just as viable as the other, Um, Picking out the product is only part of the process. We need two other things from you. Uh, Number one is going to be payment for the tax stamp. That's your $200 registration fee with good old Uncle Sam. No way around that. And that's per serial number, and that's one time up front. That's not like a reoccurring fee or anything like that. It's kind of like registering your car. I don't know if you guys do that up here in Wisconsin, if there's a fee for that or whatever. But Let's just say there is. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> Similar basic concept, right? You get it registered. Um, and then number three would be your registration information. How you're going to register it as an individual trust or corporation, and then all the kind of ancillary information that goes along with that, your demographic information, height, weight, hair color, eye color, all that good stuff. The never, ever, have I ever questions. I've never been convic- convicted not, of this, never committed not that. Not all that indifferent from buying a, a, a rifle 
fill another 4473. Similar so far, yep. but then also in that demographic information is included a set of your fingerprint cards on an FD-258 government fingerprint card um, in duplicate, and then as well as a passport-style photo. That is not to mean that you need to go get a passport photo. You can stand against a white wall, download our mobile app, and take a selfie Got against it. a white wall. And oh, that's boom, handy. Your, so, uh, passport style photo. Um, so we need not only for you to pick out the silencer, that's going to give you a serial number. You need to pay for the silencer so we can put that serial number on the forms that go to the ATF, payment for the tax stamp, and then all your registration information. Enter the kiosk, right? So that kiosk will do all your registration information to include your fingerprints. And to be blatantly honest with you and peel back the curtain here a little bit, um, the fingerprints are the hardest part, and that's the purpose of the kiosk. All of those questions and height, weight, hair color, eye color, all that good stuff, we can get from you uh, through your customer account on our website. There's other ways of doing that. You can call us on the phone and give us that information. Um, but the fingerprints, you need to leave the house for typically. Um, and that's what the kiosk is for. Well, and and you're talking about the fingerprints at the kiosk. And this these aren't your traditional uh, roll them over the ink type thing, right? Yes, it's the same basic concept. On that kiosk, you'll go through and they'll do what's called a slap print where you stick your fingers down straight and then you do a roll print where you set it down on its side and roll it over and lift it up. So you'll do all the same fingerprints you would on a paper card. You're just doing them digitally. The benefit of that is you do them the one time and we store them digitally on file. So that one time you went into a kiosk is the hardest part of this process. Yeah. Then you can be at home at 2 a.m. on your iPad sitting on the couch in your underwear, pick out a silencer, pick out a dealer, hit checkout, and we'll kick paper off paperwork off to the ATF. That's awesome. That first one's the hardest one. So but then we get you. The we first get that one. out of the way and then it's just add to cart. And obviously the ATF wait time. Yeah. For those of yep. you that aren't familiar with this process, all that information gets compiled on what's called an ATF Form 4. It gets sent off to the ATF. It sits to the ATF based on the ATF wait times at this time. Right now we're seeing about five months. Check the date stamp on the podcast. That will change by the time this is released, probably. Seems like that's a little bit fluid, huh? It is, and that goes up and down. Five months is very, very fast for an ATF Form 4 right now. Um, it's not to say we've never seen it faster, and it's not to say there are exceptions to the rule. There certainly are. Some are coming in way faster, and some are taking significantly longer. That's a general what we're seeing the bulk of them come in at right now. Um, but, you know, sometimes it's nine months, sometimes it's six months. Right now we're sitting at five. So, again, don't quote me on five months. You probably won't do that but but like on that i mean like i've talked to a ton of people who are like not mark but we could use mark as an example where well, it's mark like doesn't have a silencer yet the yeah. jerk but that's like the excuse right it's like the wait time and it's and like yes it's like well it's it's barriers to entry right? yeah sorry my dad yep. same thing like i ah, keep meaning to do it i'm like if you would have done this I know. Two years ago, you'd have two of them. Yep. And it's barriers to entry. It's wrapping your brain around what in the world's an ATF Form 4. How's that different than an ATF Form 3 and a Form 2 and a Form 9 and a Form 5? And what's a Class 3 license and do I need one? No, you don't. That's what we have. And you guys have one. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. um, the Form 4 is the paperwork to get it from someone who has a Class 3 license, an FFL SOT, to an individual trust or corporation. And then you got to look through and how am I going to register this thing? Am I going to do it as an individual? Well, that's how I buy my guns. That's mm -hmm. probably how I should do my silencers as well. Um, do I call it a silencer or a suppressor? There's so many things to learn about this that aren't super obvious, and there's a ton of not necessarily misinformation out on the Internet, but incomplete truth it's just kinda on unclear, the Internet out there. Right? It's exactly like, what it is. So I decide I want to buy a suppressor. I go to your website. I, I pick out the one that I like. I'm like, that one. I can purchase it from the website, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but then but then I might go to a retailer and then that's that's when I enter into that kiosk process then. Yes, our website runs you guys have seen this on like Home Depot and stuff. You're on the Home Depot website and it's got your local store selected up mm -hmm. at the top and mm -hmm. you can change that. Same thing on our website. You're it's sort of a combi combination of Home Depot and Amazon. You're buying a a new pair of sunglasses on Amazon. 
the invoice comes from Amazon, the customer support comes from Amazon, your shipping notification came from Amazon, but those sunglasses were shipped and fulfilled by Joe Bob's sunglasses. Yeah. It's a little more obvious on the front end from us than it is on Amazon that it's not coming from us. There's a dealer involved in there and you have to go to that dealer to pick it up at least. Um, if that dealer that you've selected has one of our kiosks, around half of our dealers have kiosks, but not all of them. You can select dealers that don't have kiosks. The beauty of the kiosk, though, is it's kind of a one-stop shop. Well, thank you. Give you a little more leash there. Yep. It's kind of a one-stop shop. Um, they can do all of your registration information there in-house versus, you know, you selected a dealer because they were the closest one to you, but 20 minutes further away was a kiosk dealer, and now you got to drive 20 minutes further away and do a kiosk. I'll also point out, you don't have to use a kiosk to submit fingerprints to us. You can do an FD8, FD258 fingerprint card and mail it to us. We'll scan it in on a ridiculously expensive FBI scanner um, and digitize them for you. Um, I'd say a fraction of a percent of people do that. They just go to a kiosk. It's way easier. I mean, that just seems like the, I mean, the beauty of it. We, you know, we're talking about here about the process and ways that we can like streamline, simplify the process. Um, digital, digital is better. Well, not, I would assume, I'm making an assumption here, but I've, uh, I've seen a person get their fingerprints done before. Uh, it's not like, uh, like sometimes you're like, oh, that wasn't a good one. Like are, are the digital ones a little bit more precise and easy to get right the first time or? Without nerding out on, you know, the technical of it, um, digital allows you to grade fingerprints so you can have a poor, good, excellent, very good okay, sure, fingerprint right. in there. Because sometimes they can get refused. Right. Absolutely, they could. The beauty of the digital system is the fact that it's giving you a grade. It means that it's recognizing that it is a fingerprint. Gotcha. So it's, it's, even if you're getting a poor, it's still an acceptable fingerprint oh, for all intents cool. and purposes. I mean, because at least in our system. Right. I mean, I'm not a like. I'm sure I'm not a fingerprint expert, right? And I'm I'm sure I could tell like, well, this was just completely smudged. Like I can't even see a fingerprint. But like beyond that. I'm sure there's some nuanced things in there that, like, just as a person, like, you know, and if you had your fingerprints professionally done, they're going to be able to tell you that, yeah. too. But uh, I don't know. Like, well, I mean, it's, it's 2024, guys. Uh, the computer is smarter than most human beings are. Right. If you stick your finger on there and you slide it as you're rolling it and it comes through smudge, the computer is going to kick back and say, hey, you slid your finger. Try and keep it in line when you roll it. It's going to walk you through that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Even, like with the kiosk in mind like i was thinking about this as we were getting ready for this and like i'm gonna look it up like we've got one like 25 minutes away from here at a gun shop yeah i i went i went to the old the old map route too and i yeah. was like oh yeah it's right there mark yeah, right there just on so, your way home so close it's on your way home um how are how are most folks uh when they when they pick that suppressor are most people are they buying it off the website and it's being fulfilled by that dealer are they going into uh, a dealer that has a kiosk and ordering it, whether they do or they don't have it in stock, as long as maybe they carry that brand, does it not matter because you're essentially not getting it right away mm -hmm. good, either? Good questions all, and what I'll kind of back up on you and come into this, um, around 60% of our silencer shop uh, forms that go to the ATF, the form fours that go to the ATF, around 60% of them, give or take, depending on the month, um, are from web sales. And that's a customer who got on our website. Maybe he walked into a brick and mortar dealer, did his looking around, whatever. At the end of the day, he pulled the trigger, so to speak, on the website, selected his local dealer, and had it transferred there. And gotcha. about 40% of them are a customer who walked into a brick and mortar dealer um, and touched and feel, touched and felt, excuse me, um, all the black metal tubes in there. And hey, this is the one I want. Bought it from that dealer. That dealer either sold it out of their own inventory or assigned it to that customer out of our inventory. There's a million ways to skin that cat. Again, not to get nerdy technical on you. Uh, but then we do the forms for that dealer in that case as well. Okay. So if you walked into one of our dealers and you bought a silencer from them, you didn't touch silencer shop at all, we're still doing the forms for you. Oh, okay. That's really what we do. We offer our kind of e-commerce marketplace website to our dealers as a service to be able to sell online. Um, but really, we're a paperwork technology company on the back end. Yeah. We just happen to sell silencers, if that makes any sense. Yeah, it does. So I've purchased the suppressor. I bought the tax stamp, right? That happens at essentially the same time. Great question. So uh, and to uh, sum, summarize for you again, uh, we need payment for the silencer. That gets your serial number. Serial number needs to go on the form. Number two is payment for the tax stamp. That's that $200 registration fee to Uncle Sam. And number three is all your registration info. 
I can take those three things in any order, out of order, over however long you want to take to do them, but nothing goes to the ATF to start that wait time, whatever it is right now, silencershop.com forward slash ATF dash, ATF dash wait dash times. Um, nothing goes to the ATF to start that wait time until we have all three in-house. We've reviewed it, made sure you dotted all your I's and crossed all your T's. You don't have a weird smudge in your fingerprints, your passport style photo. You're not wearing a hat or glasses or something in it. Um, we'll do sort of a cursory review and we're decently good at that. Uh, and then we'll kick it off to ATF. One more thing just to throw in there. We are on e-forms now and have been for a couple of years. There is a certification on e-forms at ATF's electronic filing system. So we're not actually pin printing paper forms anymore and mailing to the ATF. We're doing it electronically. Uh, and in that, you need to create an ATF e-forms account. We'll send you the info for how to do that. It is stupid simple. Um, you just need to use the same email address as you use with us to create your ATF e-forms account. You'll do your little certification there and it kicks off to ATF. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Perfect. Now you brought up, or you mentioned a couple of things. Uh, we talked about, uh, um, you make the purchase as, you know, uh, an, an individual mm -hmm. or a trust. Yeah. The ways to the, register. And the, the way just the ways to register. So maybe walk us through a couple of those different ways mm -hmm. and then, uh, you know, maybe the advantages, disadvantages of each. And even when we get to like a trust, like why, why, why do I, what is a trust and why do I need one or why might I need one if, uh, if I want to own a suppressor? Yeah. So this is a great question as well. And I mentioned there are three ways to register. There are really only two viable ways for most retail consumers. It's individual or trust. Corporation is an option that's on the table. If you don't know if you want to register through a corporation, you don't want to register through a corporation. You'll know if that's how you want to register. Um, it is sort of the uh, redheaded stepchild, if you will. Um, so individual versus trust is really where this conversation breaks down. And I would say, again, as I kind of alluded to earlier, you know, I buy all my guns as an individual. I fill out that 4473 of the dealer as an individual. I'm just going to buy my suppressor as an individual. Okay, cool. No problem. Around 20% of all the applications we send to the ATF are individuals. That being said, 80% of them are trusts. It is better for most people. There is not a one size fits all for this though. Some people want to register an individual and they have legitimate reasons for doing that and some people most people um, benefit from registering as a trust and the reason for that is fairly simple as an individual that suppressor goes off to the ATF the paperwork for that suppressor goes off to the ATF um, comes back approved and if Tyler registered for that silencer I'm the only one that can be in possession of that silencer for the life of that silencer so if you two year which uh, day one, the new hasn't worn off this thing yet. Yeah, I'm the only one that's ever going to be in yeah. possession of this thing. You guys are never going to get to shoot my silencer. But two, three, four years down the road, the new's worn off this thing at this point, and uh, you're going on an elk hunt or something like that, and you don't have a 30 cal rifle silencer, um, you can't borrow mine. I have to be there with it. Uh, okay. If we're sitting in the same deer blind, and I'm there with it, we're on the same static gun range or something, I'm standing next to you, you can absolutely shoot it. I just need to be there with it at all times. If you want to take it to the deer blind on the other end of the lease or something like that. Um, See, I would just say you have to take me with you on your elk hunt. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so that's another strategy. You may actually. be one of the 20%. <laughs> yeah. Um, so for a lot of people, registering as a trust, even if you don't have anyone that you think you want to share this thing with right now, it just opens you up to options down the road. Um, you can add and remove people to your trust who can use the items held within your trust on their own. Um, these people need to be um, responsible persons of the trust and you as the grantor of the trust need to be um, cognizant of who you're letting on the trust and not letting on the trust. Gotcha. And to back up one step further, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not giving any legal advice here. I'm discussing yeah. how I would do this and how I think about it, right? Um, so huge benefit of trust is being able to add additional people. Um, second benefit of a trust is somewhat morbid to think about, but uh, worth thinking about because your suppressor is going to outloot typically outlive the barrel you're shooting it on. You're going to hand it down to your kids, if not your grandkids. Um, how does that suppressor transfer after you pass away? Um, on a trust, it's much easier to set up a beneficiary, someone that the, tr that the trust would go to in the event of your death. A trustee would be someone who can use the items in the trust. A beneficiary would be the person that it goes to in your death. So we're kind of defining some terms yeah. here, right? Who owns okay. it versus who can use it. Correct. Yeah. Got so okay. as as they're written, 99.9% .9 of trusts, the beneficiary has no rights to use the items in the trust. They're just who the trust 
and the items would go to in the event of the grantor's death versus a trustee, someone who can use the items and even use that trust to buy their own NFA items, which is interesting. You know, depending on who your trustees are, you may or may not want to them to do yeah. that. Um, so as, as a trust, again, it's just opening you up to options you have down the road that you never really had to think about in Title One regular old guns. Mm-hmm. I know your granddad's thirty out six or something like that that just gets handed down and so on and so forth versus an NFA item. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's not to say as an individual you can't pass down NFA items. You certainly can. You can will them to people and they can be transferred out of Form 5. That's kind of a separate topic for a separate video. But um, those are the two main benefits of trusts for most okay. people. Gotcha. And I think you may have mentioned this, but you can add and subtract, right, if something changes. So it's not like, oh, man, I added this person. And in perpetuity, you know, you can you can adjust that. All of our trusts, um, the way you add a person to it is its own eight and a half by 11 piece of paper um, that they sign and I hereby add John Smith onto my trust. Um, If at any point that person needs to be off the trust for whatever reason, I just rip that page in half and he's off the trust. Okay. Gotcha. If a person at some point they did file as an individual Mm -hmm. with a suppressor, can they move that to a trust down the road, or are they stuck? You can. It's an extra $200. It's basically, at this point, you, the individual, are selling it to the trust, as far oh. as the ATF is concerned, and transferring it to the trust. Granted, money probably didn't change hands, because it's you and your trust, um, but you're re-registering it under the trust name, which costs a $200 tax stamp and a Form 4 and a wait time. Okay. You Very can do that. Most people wouldn't especially if you own a couple individually and then $200 times however many you own starts to add up pretty yeah, quick. Yeah, for sure. For that sure. sounds like an excuse to buy another suppressor. Bingo. Yeah, that's where my head's going to. I would also say there's a couple of different styles of trust, that's, specifically at Silencer oh, Shop. You're going right into where I wanted to go here. It's almost like I've done this before. I know, something. right? Um, so traditional NFA gun trust is, um, if you've been around NFA items, which NFA items, sorry, I use a lot of industry jargon acronyms. NFA items would be National Firearms Act, um, basically short barrel shotguns, short barrel rifles, machine guns, suppressors, AOWs, that kind of stuff. Stuff that takes an additional registration and goes on to the NFRTR. We'll cross that acronym when we get to it. Um, but basically, if, if you're doing that process, that's an NFA item, right? And uh, if you've been in that NFA world at all, you're probably familiar with the concept of a traditional NFA gun trust. Let's say I set up a new gun trust today. It's got just me on it. I buy a new silencer. Silencer shop sends off my paperwork. It comes back approved. I go pick up that silencer. I had to submit all my fingerprints and passport photo and all that good stuff that silencer shop did for me. Hey, good. Um, Let's say six months from now, I've added you onto my trust because we're range buddies, hunting buddies, whatever we do, um, so that you can use the item with me or without me. Then if I want to use that trust to come back and buy another silencer, you're now listed on my trust. So that trust goes back to the ATF for the next silencer I buy, and the ATF looks at this paperwork and sees, oh, hey, Ruben's on my trust now, Tyler's on my trust now, you need to do fingerprints as well as me. For some people, no problem at all. The guys that you have on your trust may already be in our system, or they may live in California because it's your brother-in-law, and when he comes over, he wants to use your stuff, whatever that is. Oh, gotcha, yeah. If they've already gone through that process, probably a little bit more streamlined, but if they haven't, Another step. Which, again, isn't the end of the world. They just need to get into one of our kiosks and fill out all the paperwork, and we'll submit all their stuff to the ATF. But for some people, I've now added 15 people onto that trust over the course of the last six years of owning silencers or whatever the case may be. I've got so many people on there that getting them all in and having them all submit passport-style photos on our mobile app and all their demographic information is too much of a headache. Enter the single-shot trust. This is a trust where the name of the trust is the serial number of the item you bought. That trust is only good for that one NFA item, be it a short barrel rifle or a silencer, or whatever it is. It goes off the ATF with just me on it, comes back approved. I can now add whichever responsible party I want to add to that trust. They'll never need to do that fingerprint, f- uh, passport photo, all that good stuff, because that trust never goes back to the ATF with them on it. Gotcha. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. So for a lot of people... A uh, single shot trust at $25 is sort of, I don't want to say no brainer because again, it's not a one size fits all, but for a lot of people it is. It's just the easiest way to do it. It goes off to the ATF with only one person on it. Um, also fair to point out the difference between individual and trust. There will typically be different wait times for each. 
okay. at ATF. Right now, individuals are processing a little bit faster than trusts are. Um, if you think about from the ATF's point of view, which is a difficult thing for some people to do, but to put yourself in the ATF's shoes, if an individual registers, there's no additional trust paperwork to look at, so that one can go through faster versus a trust with 15 people on it, and I've got to go through the trust document, make sure all the I's are dotted, T's and crossed, guys' names are spelled correctly, wife's names are spelled correctly, all that stuff, kids' names are spelled correctly, all that, and then look through all the in- additional information. It's going to take longer to process. Mm-hmm. Well, and then, you know, I guess one nice thing, too, is, like, you don't have to have, like, the foresight to know, ultimately, who you're going to add to that trust, like, when you create the trust. Like, you can, you can add somebody down the road so you're not like when you make that trust i guess i'm just i'm not uh maybe i'm just like clarifying what you already said but like i just find that as a benefit just because you know you don't know who you might want to add or subtract and so another benefit of a single shot which is the reason i personally use them now i've got a very fancy traditional nfa gun trust that one of our corporate lawyers wrote up for me years ago i don't use it anymore because now on a single shot trust i get in a lightweight hunting silencer for a 30 cal magnum cartridge I can add and remove my hunting buddies to that trust but my home defense nightstand silencer my wife's the only one on that trust mm-hmm. nobody else has access to that one and I have a little bit to use the industry bud- buzzword modularity in who's on what it's a little more to keep track of again it's not best for everybody you have to be a little more OCE and a little more organized to keep track of all the additional trusts but for me I really like that ability of oh, my brother's on all these ones my hunting buddies are on all these ones. My wife's on all of them, mm-hmm. so on mm-hmm. and so forth. Yeah, you can really customize as you go. And that kind of, it does dovetail in my next question. It's like, oh, man, because from what I hear, from what I hear, you buy one suppressor and no, it you don't. will not be your last. Yep. And so then I could see a person going, man, do I want 15 truss? You know, and the answer sounds like maybe yes. It could be. Yeah, and that's... I, People always come in and they ask, just what should I do? Well, it's, again, a lot like optics. Some guy walks in and says, I need a scope. What in the world for? All right, yeah. That's a big question. You ask the wrong it person. Depends. Right? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Um, for a lot of people, yeah, single shot's the way to go. I will also mention we have a single shot unlimited option. Mm-hmm. Our traditional NFA gun trust at the time of recording is a $130. We'll round up a nice round number. And our single shot's 25 For $130, you can get our single shot unlimited, which is basically a lifetime subscription, one-time fee. And every time you buy an NFA item from any one of our dealers all over the country, we'll just attach a single shot to it every time you do it. Oh, interesting. In perpetuity, yeah. No kidding, huh? Mm-hmm. Well, that's cool. So again, the, the goal of the trust is not for us to pull the wool over your eyes and make money on that. The goal of the trust is create as many possible ways to simplify this for as many people as possible because as we were talking earlier there's barriers to entry and speed bumps and i gotta wrap my brain around all these different things and at some point we start to dilute that by adding too many options um but we've tried to pare it down so it's basically three traditional nfa single shot and single shot unlimited which is kind of the same as single shot i mean what i love about your company and the services you offer and and you know essentially for lack of a word, the products you've created here with the trust. I mean, it really has simplified and streamlined the process. Like I can even think like 15 years ago when uh, you talk to somebody about getting stuff, they're like, yeah, I had to visit, you know, I visited with my lawyer. They drew up a trust. I think you even mentioned that, right? And it's just like, who, man, like even just that, just like, ah, do I really want, I don't, I don't have a lawyer. You know what I mean? I'd have to go find a guy. I don't know. Like, again, like it's just one of those things where like, eh, I don't want to think about it now. I'll do it later. And then you don't. Like 10, 10 years ago, that's what I went through. Find a lawyer, have a, cr- a trust built, and then you have all the maintenance too. So who do I have to contact when this changes? Who you know, this is so simple. We send you an email with a PDF body of the trust in there, and then all of the other things you need down the road are in that same email. The addendums to add and remove people, all that good stuff is included in that email. So you just need Incredible. to keep track of that. Did we miss anything? Like it almost seems too simple. Good. Maybe that was part of the plan. Yeah, the truck's it's, running. We're yeah, <laughs> we're gonna head out. <laughs> I r- we run into this every single day. People who say, I don't know, "I've been looking at buying a silencer, and I just I haven't pulled the trigger yet because there was just too much." Or this sounds like a gigantic pain in the butt. Um, there is a pain in the butt. It's not a big one though. Mm-hmm. Um, 
we mitigate that as much as humanly possible, and we are there answering phones and emails all day long, as well as all of our dealers out there in the wild. If if I can say anything that's not too terribly cliche, the longer you wait, the longer you wait. Yeah. The longer you wait to pull the trigger, the longer you're going to wait before you get a silence. Yeah, I'm finding that. Yep. And you'll be back for a second one. Everybody always is. As soon as you get one, if you've never shot suppressed before, it is a different ball game. And I say that to people all the time. They think I'm trying to sell them something, which is fair. I am. Right. Yep. But also, I'm not lying to you. It's different. It, everybody that, you know, and I've, I've shot suppressed before, I'm always just so grateful when I'm around somebody else who is shooting suppressed. And frankly, for a long time, I've been part of the problem and not part of the solution uh, as it comes to that. But, uh, man, it, it is just a delight. And you got to watch out because you very quickly turn into sort of a jaded uh, snob at the range where you show up at the range and that person sitting next to you doesn't have a silencer and you roll your eyes at them like, come on, man, what are you doing? Why are you shooting 5.56 five, with a muzzle brake right next to me? <laughs> I don't want to be that guy anymore, Rube. Don't Let's be that guy. Mark. <laughs> Nobody likes that guy. Well, now I have the tools yep. to solve this problem. So, man, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm going to have to start down the path. I said it the last time, but I mean it this time. You did say it the last time. Yeah. That was three years ago? Yeah. Think how many suppressors I could own by now. A couple. Several to many. I have bad words to say about you. Can we do that off air? Yeah, we'll wait. All right, cool. Well, easy peasy, guys. That wraps it up for this episode of the Vortex Nation podcast. I imagine if anybody else has uh, further questions or additional questions or wanna wants to chat with you guys, Tyler, how do they do that? Silencershop.com, support at silencershop.com, or our phone number is listed on the website. I won't bark it off at you. Reach out. Reach out. Give them a call. They'll help you like they've helped me. Take care. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye, everybody. Thanks. Thanks.